Has your vet turned down your request for more antibiotics? Well, they're not trying to be difficult. It's just the fact that if a dog or cat doesn't respond to a course of antibiotics as we would expect, or if their infection seems to come back, it's really important that we address a few key concerns. If we don't, the results could be disaster. <laughs> Hi, I'm veterinarian Dr Alex, here to help you optimise your pet's health so that they can live the full and happy life that they deserve. And the first reason not to give antibiotics long term to your pet or to have them on and off antibiotics really frequently is the potential for side effects. Now, all drugs carry the risk of side effects and with antibiotics in the short term, side effects are normally because of a really high dose being given. So examples of this would be a, a, a drug called metronidazole which can cause problems with the nerves or something like enrofloxacin which can actually cause retinal problems in cats. Those are both concerns with high doses of antibiotics being given. With long-term treatment, we can also get some really quite nasty problems. Now, the first problem is simply that antibiotics, they don't target specific areas. Some are a little bit more selective, but they will affect bacteria that normally live in your pet's body, and that can cause things like chronic diarrhea or even vomiting, because all of the good bacteria in the gut have been just wiped out. Now, probiotics may play a role in preventing that, but if we can avoid long-term antibiotics, all the better. The really big reason to avoid constant courses of antibiotics or long-term antibiotics is the potential for superbug formation. So the longer a pet is on antibiotics in general or inappropriate use of antibiotics, so where they really shouldn't be used or they're being used inappropriately, that results in resistant infection. So the bacteria become resistant to the antibiotic that's being given, and they can also become resistant to, an to other antibiotics, even though they're not receiving them. And that is how we get superbugs, which cause multi-resistant infection. They're really difficult, really challenging to treat, and they can cause a risk to human health as well. We also need to think, why are we giving antibiotics long term? Now, there are a number of conditions where it is appropriate. So conditions like antibiotic response responsive diarrhoea, chronic snuffles in cats that although it's a viral problem they have repeated bacterial problems. Inflammatory bowel disease as well, we can use the antibiotic metronidazole which I've already discussed longer term. They all play a role and that is appropriate for a particular case, although it's important that they've gone through that diagnostic procedure beforehand. In many other cases though, our antibiotics are only treating the secondary infection. That means an infection is a result of another underlying disease and it's much better to tackle that problem rather than just continue to throw antibiotics at your dog or cat. So if your pet seems to have infections that keep recurring or they just don't seem to be getting better with antibiotics, there are four key questions that you and your vet need to be asking. The first is, is the diagnosis right? Are you treating the right thing? For example, cystitis in cats rarely needs antibiotics. A recurrent nasal discharge in a dog is typically due to a fungal problem, a foreign body, so something stuck up their nose, or a mass. It's seldom the result of a primary and initiating bacterial infection. And then skin infections is another common problem, but if it's coming back all the time, often we're dealing with something like allergic skin disease or various other skin complaints. The second question is, are there any other treatments or management strategies that you could be doing to remove the need for antibiotics? With our skin infection example, it could mean that you change your dog's diet, you add in an essential fatty acid supplement, you're regularly shampooing them, you're keeping their parasite control up to date. There's a whole load of other things that we can do to actually prevent that infection in the first place rather than having to treat it time and again. And then is the right antibiotic being used? Antibiotics tackle different types of infection and they penetrate different areas more effectively so it's important that the right antibiotic is being given if there is an infection that needs to be treated. Now we can normally just give a a general antibiotic based on what the clinical signs are and the diagnosis is, and that will be effective in the majority of cases. But if that's not working, we definitely need to be thinking about taking a swab to send that off to the laboratory to see if that particular bacterial infection is resistant to any particular type of antibiotic so that we can get your pet on the best treatment possible. 
And then is the dose correct? Have you followed all the instructions appropriately with the right dose at the right interval? Has your pet changed weight since they were dispensed a longer course of antibiotics? Have you given the course for a long enough period of time? With our skin infection example, it's generally recommended that a minimum antibiotic course is actually three weeks, so it's important not to stop as soon as you see a potential resolution of that infection. Responsible antibiotic use and superbug formation is a real risk, and I discussed this in a lot more detail in the video on screen now. It's a really important human health consideration that we all need to take ownership of. But until next time, I'm Dr. Alex. This is Our Pets Health, because they're family.